This is Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon in beta. The login screen looks about the same. The mouse pointer is the only thing that looks a little bit different to me. The login sounds different. And I believe the shutdown sound is also a little bit different. So here's the welcome screen. Linux Mint 21.1, of course this is the beta. And this looks pretty familiar to me, although I'm not a Cinnamon user myself. Most of that looks pretty normal. The computer home and trash icons are absent from the desktop. Of course you can restore those if you wish. The theme and the colour are the first things that stood out to myself. So if we have a look at the menu, we can see it's got this blue hint around it. The colouring is a bit different if we open the file manager. The default colour and theme is different. There's no show desktop icon over here near the menu. It's just this separator. So if you right click on it there, you can see about separator or remove separator. And there is this button over here, show the desktop, which we'll have a look at a little bit later. Progress bars and so forth, as you can see down here, are all highlighted in blue as well. If you want to resize a window, we'll get a, a little red triangle up in this corner a blue one in that corner, we get a green one down here, and a tan one over here. When the system's busy, the mouse pointer goes into a spinning circle with those four colours in it also. We go into the settings, and themes, again you can see the blue highlight on there. Some of this has changed in here. This is the mouse. You can see here the mouse pointer is different so if we click on that of course you can go back to the more traditional ones in there. But I'm going to leave it as it is for the duration of the video. There is quite a bit of choice in applications. And the icons are the same. That is just loaded to the hilt. So there's quite a bit of choice in there. We're not going to change any. We'll just have a bit of a look. And these ones down here are now called Legacy. So this is the old Mint Y. Now called Mint Y Legacy. But they are still present nonetheless. And what have we got in here? Same thing. That's fairly loaded up in there so there's no no lacking for theming and colouring changes and most of the rest of this in here looks fairly familiar to myself I'm not going to go through everything I'm just going to have a bit of a quick look at the system created a new folder on the desktop let's open the file manager and we'll just put that over the folder so the folder's hidden by an application. This is a new feature down near the clock. Show desktop. So if we click that, that's the show desktop. We can right click it and configure it. So we can see at the moment, click action is show the desktop. Show desklets, which we have none. Uh, we can make it do expo. We can make it do scale. We can peek at the desktop on hover, so let's activate that. And now if we run the mouse down there, you can see those applications fade out. We can now see that folder up in the top left hand corner. You can change the opacity there. 5% seems to be about a good amount. And as you can see, if you go back to zero, they completely disappear. You can have a blur effect. The 
little hard to see there, but you get the general idea. Of course, being in the corner, as long as you're generally heading that direction with the mouse, you're going to hit it. So whether you hit too soon on the side, but you continue down, you'll hit that button. Or if you hit the bottom first, as long as you keep sliding across a little bit, as long as you're heading in that general direction, the mouse will hit the side or the bottom, and then it'll continue to travel down until it strikes that button. There's also options there for middle click, so at the moment it's show desklets and so on there. So you can left click it, you can center click it or mouse wheel, or you can right click it to get into the configuration which we've got up here now. Or you could also right click and remove it if you don't want it there. Right clicking the title bar, if you want to move to another workspace, you actually I sat there waiting for that before, but you've actually got to click it open. So it doesn't just pop out by itself. And then we could move that to another workspace. So we have options here for notifications, including changing the duration. Including here, media key, on-screen display size, currently set to medium. Unfortunately for me, my Multimedia keys don't work here on the virtual machine, so I can't test that. Let's start the driver manager. And you notice we didn't have to put our password in there. There'll probably be no drivers for this virtual machine, but nonetheless, it hasn't asked for a password. No drivers needed. We'll start the file manager again and if I go into downloads I've got a couple of ISO files there so this is the, the system we're on here the Linux Mint 21.1 beta uh, you'll notice it doesn't highlight the whole thing just the file name we can right click it and we can go verify and this neat little tool pops up here I'll just resize that a little bit you see it's calculating the SHA-256 sum. That'll pop up there in a moment. And there it is. And down below, we can see where it's going to get the, uh, the sum file and the GPG signing file from there. So let's click verify. Okay, well that actually froze on me. Let's try it again. Let's right click and go verify. And I'll let it finish calculating first. I think it also only works on Linux Mint or Ubuntu distributions. I, I did try it on a Manjaro one and I got an error on that. So bear that in mind also. And there we go. It's verified. Everything looks good. You can also right click an ISO file. Make a bootable USB stick. And I believe this will also work. I don't have a USB plugged in there. I believe this also works for Windows ISO files. Installation appeared to be the same to me. I just did a pretty default sort of install onto this virtual machine. And I didn't really notice anything different there. The ISO is about 2.7 gigabytes. And once you've downloaded and installed it, as of yesterday when I installed this, it required an additional 240 odd megabytes of updates as well. So in all, it'll be, be around about three gigabytes download by the time you download, install and update. So this is the blog from a few days ago. So he was very brief there. This is the blog from October 2022. Less password prompts as we saw with the driver manager and other changes. They mentioned the corner bar there, the cinnamon corner bar. So there you go, it's cinnamon. It's not just a Linux Mint corner bar, it's a cinnamon corner bar. There's the configuration tool. So, And here he's mentioning the visual changes when you select folders and other changes and so forth there and the release notes. As I mentioned before, 
I'll put the links for these pages in the description under the video. And here we can see that it's supported until 2027. So that's nearly five years of support there. And once again, this is still in beta. So it's expected to be out around Christmas time, is what they're saying. So two to three weeks, you'll probably be able to install this. And as usual, it'll probably be a few days after that before the upgrade from version 21 up to version 21.1 will be available but all that will unfold in due time the corner bar the verify ISO tool and other changes they've made throughout the distro but the color change was the biggest one for me being that Linux Mint is normally that minty green color so we'll wait and see what transpires when the stable is released hopefully before the end of 2022